Ground Radio. New voices amplified. Thank you so much for joining Earground. This is uh, a Thursday evening edition of Earground. Tonight we're not talking to a musician, but we're talking to uh, an amazing uh, media personality. She goes by the name Miss Red. So in the next few minutes, one or two minutes, I'm going to be adding here to the conversation. We're going to be talking to her uh, about what she does and how she does it. So stay tuned. Hey. Nah, technology ain't you. <laughs> <laughs> I know the experience. You know, I was, I was I, literally I was, stuck. Oh. Yeah. So, sorry about that. But I mean, you know, the first one, I mean, I've had a couple of guests that also go through the same. And I did uh, go through the same too. And I had to do a lot of tutorials on, 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 on YouTube. How are you? I'm good. How are you? No, I'm good. And thank you so much for taking your time from a busy schedule to to part of uh, the eground conversation. I don't, I don't know about busy schedule right now because I'm just in bed, <laughs> to be quite honest with you. Didn't you get my memo? Because everyone must be wearing pajamas <laughs> now. No, I didn't get that. <laughs> I just I just <laughs> heard the part where you said, I'm taking a bath and I'm going to spray some Dior. So that I smell good. Yes. So <laughs> for everyone that's watching, I I, I had to, to be fair. I was like, you know, I don't geezer. Uh, I want to really look nice and I want to look fresh for this interview <laughs> because it's plot. Marco is a big deal. Sakandika geezer. If I feel, if I smell fresh, if I, you know, put my natural on, mm -hmm. I'll be okay. So yeah, I was well prepared for this interview. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Yeah, cool. So we get straight into it. Um, at most, I think we have to. We are going to last an hour, unless if okay. you want to stretch it beyond that. But we'll try to keep it short. So to I start hope my bundles business, will allow. Okay, cool. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> this has we'll involving problems, man. Yeah, I know. I can. I can relate. You know, I've been trying to get out of a couple of friends uh, that I used to call on video, and now they are no longer callable. <laughs> <laughs> no, but don't worry. It's no Wi-Fi. No, if I are ah, cool then. So, yeah, to yeah. start with, uh, who's Miss Red? Who's Miss Red? Um, there's two people, I think, essentially. There's the man from Utah. I'm getting a bit of feedback. I'm getting a bit of feedback. Oh, do I need to put on earphones? I think there's two people. I think there's two earphones. Yeah. I hate this because, you know, like, I'm in broadcasting. It's so bad. When you're in broadcasting and you're not used to feedback, it's like, ah, you know. <laughs> but anyway, I hear you, I hear you, I hear okay, you. Okay, thanks, So cool. there's two people, there's Samantha Musa and then there's Miss Red, right? Mm. So Samantha Musa is daughter of Stanley and Albertina Musa. Um, I'm the firstborn in my family. Uh, we are four of us, right? Oh. But then... Miss Red is a little bit more exciting because Miss, Miss Red was birthed about five years ago. So she is um, a media personality. She's a radio presenter. She's a television presenter. Mm -hmm. She is a, a media mogul in the making. I always mention that mm -hmm. because I feel like <laughs> I speak that into my existence at every single step in my life. I always yes. say that I have to keep on reminding people of my end goal. Mm -hmm. So I'm never scared or shy to say what I want to become, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and then she's a businesswoman outside of media. She's got a couple of business interests in food processing. Uh, and yeah, that's basically who I am in a nutshell. Like if I'm to summarize it all. She's a mother. Mm -hmm. That Okay, no, Samantha Musa is a mother. Miss Red is not like, Miss Red is a mom, <laughs> but like she's not a out there mom. <laughs> but Samantha Musa is a very out there mom of two beautiful daughters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ah, and she's, yeah, that's all, that's really all about her. Ah, great. 
And I must say uh, happy birthday to you. You just turned a year older you. yesterday. And, and look, my bedroom is like lit. I've got like balloons. I've got flowers. <laughs> nice, nice. I've got like a lot of things. It's, it's, it's crazy. Did you really get pampered? Did people like send you presents, money, gifts and stuff? The Red Nation came. Like my, my room looks like a florist. Like I can't show you everything, but it looks wow. like a florist. Um, and it was all from just people who love what I do, who support what mm-hmm. I do. My yeah. friends actually said, we are not going to do anything for you today mm-hmm. because we don't want to invade on your space with your people. So with my friends, they said that my birthday is on Saturday. Mm-hmm. But like the actual oh, day that nice. I was born was yesterday. Was yesterday. Mm-hmm. And I got to celebrate it with the people that, you know, mm-hmm. have really supported the Miss Red brand. So thank you. Ah, great. And I, I must say, I'm, I'm actually happy because we share the same month. We're just two days apart. My birthday is tomorrow. So it, it's quite cool that, I mean, your birthday is just two days away from mine. So we should have like a joint party. So I'm having a party on the 18th of May. So you oh, can okay. come, like you can fly to Zimbabwe and then we can have the That'll party together. That would be dope. Yeah? Definitely, I'll organize that. I'll, I'll speak to your team. I understand. Like, Right, of, right. Yeah, your so one cool. personality has so, cool. so much bureaucracy. Be really cool. Yeah, <laughs> I know you've, you've, you've got a huge team that you're working with. So, Miss Red is a brand that is managed. Oh, the network. I don't know what's going on. Okay, can you hear me now? Hello. Yes. And now. Hello. Now, can you Are hear you me? there? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you so well. We need and to see rejoin. You Okay, cool. Let's see how that one goes. I'm going to try and add it again um, and see how the correction goes. Samantha Moisa, let me approve. Thanks a lot to everybody who's joined. I yeah, think I'm back. back. You're back, yes, you're back. Cool, so... Yeah. Yeah, you've told me about your background, how... Uh, the you know and and and, and you have separated like Miss Red and Samantha uh, Musa, mm-hmm. and I think I'm going to dwell more on uh, Samantha no Miss Red rather yeah the brand okay forgive me okay. when I when I mix and get vexed by the two because yeah, a lot of people do that yeah <laughs> yes so what, what when did you get into media when did you start uh, broadcasting. <sighs> Like I said, I got into, oh, Miss Red was birthed uh, five years ago. I, I've always been interested in media, to be quite honest. Mm-hmm. So I used to listen to him a lot and I'm like, ah, I'm cause on radio, you know, and I would listen and it wasn't really like, I don't, I wouldn't say it was something that was too far from what I would have loved to do because I always loved listening to radio. And I was never really interested in TV as much as I was interested in radio. Um, and I'd pretend to be like a DJ and I would like have my friends over and I'll be like playing records and I'll be like doing the announcements. So it's always been somewhere in my radar but it was like from like the back back end and also in terms of music I actually studied music for my O level I wrote music for Cambridge a lot of people don't know that so I've always been very passionate about music and broadcasting was always something that I just loved mm-hmm. without necessarily thinking of a career in it yeah, yeah. so it started a long time ago so uh, by the time I got into radio five years ago and it was it was it was like it, it, it just all came together without me really thinking much about it because I needed a reason to move back to Zimbabwe because I was still staying in Pretoria at the, at the time. And someone heard my voice because I was working at this call center as a part-time thing. And someone heard my voice and they're like, ah, you should yeah. be in G, you should be in radio. Um, but let's start off with voiceover. So when they said that, I thought they were trying to mack on me, right? So the next day they called my boss. Mm-hmm. And- Yeah, yeah, you, you, Can you, you believe this network? <laughs> no, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> you said it so before it's, it's you started. Not, 
I said it. It's not that mm. I don't have like I bought bundles on both levels. I bought <laughs> bundles. I got Wi-Fi, but ish, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, Anyhow, so I like the song that. that you're playing, by the way. Oh, by Aishan and uh, Tigons. Yes, it's very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah, I actually think it's one of the best songs that have come out of 2019. I've played it a hundred times, and right now it's sitting. And it's still fresh, and, right? It's very nice. Yeah, it's, 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 it's still fresh and doing well. Yeah, so you're telling about yourself, and if I got you well, you mentioned that uh, James Earl Dad is your brother, right? Did I hear no, 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 no. It's like a, uh, my, 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 it's a family friend. Like, you know how in, mm. in, in Malawi culture, everybody is just their relatives. So I used to listen to him, like, long back. So this is where I, my passion started from. But I'd got into the part of... Um, I'd got into the part of... Uh, I was working at a call center in South Africa in Pretoria and someone had heard my voice and they said, you should try radio, you should try, try voiceovers. And then I was like, I, I was thinking that they were trying to mack on me. But uh, lo and behold, next day the guy came back and then he spoke to my boss. He's like, I want that girl. I want to use her voice for some voiceovers. And then I just went because my boss pushed me. So I trusted it. But you know, with, with guys, you're always like, ah, is this guy really serious? Or he's actually trying to just spit some game, you know? Yeah, yeah. So after that, what happened was I started like earning like really decent money, but I still needed a reason to come back home because my daughter was there at the time. She was about three, four years old, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, actually, no, she was two years old. Okay. So then um, I kept on like applying after I, I discovered that maybe I could do radio. I kept on applying. I applied to Star FM. They said no. Yeah. I applied to ZFM. They said no. Right. Oh, okay. So yes. at first they, yes. you were rejected. <laughs> I was rejected by everybody. So um, I'd made a demo. So what my friend said, my friend gave me a trick. So my friend was like, why don't you brand the CD cover in a way that makes it look like it's, um, it's, a, it's, 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 it's music, right? Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, cool. So I did like a, a, a little photo shoot with my phone. And then I had a really nice picture on the cover. So it was just there somewhere. But I always say that this is God because even if it was there, I mean, the fact that it was even picked out of all those other CDs, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's by divine intervention. So at the time, uh, if you remember, there was that whole Tintin thing that was happening. So they mm -hmm. were needing a replacement because she had been taken off air at the time or she had gotten off air. I don't know which way, which way it happened. Mm -hmm. Disclaimer. I don't know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so... Yes. Um, at the time, um, the, it was mm. Tony G. Tony G, if you remember Tony G, he was a producer from, uh, he is a producer from uh, the Midlands. So he was working um, okay. with Sunny Makalima in the sound engineering section of ZFM, right? So he picked up oh, the CD and he was wow. like, hmm, this looks like a nice CD. Let me listen to the music, right? And after he picked this up, he went and played, he went and played the CD and then... Um, he was listening to like, okay, this is not music. This is a this is a demo, and then he's like, wait a minute, why are people you know not like why are people struggling to find a replacement? Here's a girl. I'm sure they can train her, right? And then he ran downstairs. This is how he told me the story. Ran downstairs and then went to the programs manager at the time, who was Tony Friday and TK Tony Friday and Sunday. So they happened to be together, and then they listened to this demo like, voila, we can train this voice. Find her now, yeah. right? After I had been rejected, you have to remember I had been rejected previously yeah, by Tony yeah, Friday, yeah. actually, <laughs> right? So, um, yeah, I was I was at home at the time. So this is I've given you a scenario one that's happening at ZFM yeah. right now, right? Mm -hmm. Scenario two, uh, actually, no, the scenario that I'm going to give you now is scenario one, and then the other one is scenario two. Okay. So I'm at home. I I've come back from Pretoria. I'm really feeling dejected, and I'm praying. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And during this prayer, you know, I always tell the story. That I, 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 I was almost shouting at God. Good name, what, what do you want me to do in this country, right? I want to come back, but how, how am I supposed to survive? I don't have a job. I've got a child who needs yeah. to be taken care of, and I have no job, right? Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, I got out. Of, I, I finished my prayer, wiped my tears after a very emotional, um, angry prayer, and literally mm -hmm. about ten minutes after I prayed, like you can count. Yeah. Literally almost 10 minutes after I prayed, I got a call from Tony Friday. And he wow. says to me, can you come to the radio station? So in my head, I was like, ah, it's probably voiceovers because they already rejected me. So, hey. Mm -hmm. So by the time I got there, the um, afternoon 
of that day. Mm-hmm. They were like, mm-hmm. so we want to train you so that you can get on radio. So I was like, oh, okay. So I got trained and literally two weeks later, I was on the breakfast show. Mm-hmm. That's how wow. it was done. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's quite impressive. And I think what, what really strikes me from your story is the uh, spirit of perseverance. You never give up mm, after rejection. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I think that is a hallmark for so many successful people. And mm-hmm. I must say, it's, 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 it's quite encouraging and I think very inspiring, especially for our generation, uh, mm-hmm. given the challenges that they, they are facing, that just don't give up and keep you know, pushing on. I think the story of Zimbabwe is a lot of us fail. A lot of us, we have so many things that are thrown at us. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you can either choose to walk away and just say, you know what, I give up. Mm -hmm. Or you can just say, okay, this is not necessarily a mistake or this is not bad luck or whatever, but it's a lesson. I don't, I don't think in life there are any mistakes or there are any situations which you can't come out of. I always think everything is a lesson. So every time I come back from rejection, from failure, I sit down and I'm like, okay, what was the lesson, you know? Mm-hmm. I, if, yeah. I get, mm-hmm. if I get rejected at a job, if I get, I ask myself, what is the lesson? So that's how I've been able to move forward. And for me as well, because I've got so many things that go against me, the way I look, the fact I'm a black woman that's already um, a, a, a point of, of disadvantage as the world would see it. Um, I'm a black woman. I am not the most beautiful woman. I'm not the most educated woman. But I have to figure out how to make things work in, in that with all these limitations. I have to constantly be fighting for everything that I have. So my fighting spirit comes from the fact that I'm a nobody, but I have been capacitated to become a somebody. Wow. And what, 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 how do you balance your nine to five and other projects? I think you're one of the most sought after uh, MCs in the country and uh, brand personalities and influencers. How do you balance? You've got a nine to five and then you've got a whole lot of things that are going on. And now mm-hmm. I think if I'm, Correct. I mean, you, you're also getting into modeling and stuff. How do you balance this? I have a very strong team. So they allow me to kind of um, be myself. And then they do all the other things that need to be done in order for the misread brand to be presented to the public. So mm-hmm. you'll find I've got my management team. I've got my social media people. Wow. I've got my, my glam squad. Everything is like I've got structure. And really do as much as I wanted to but now because I've got those structures because I've got a management team I've got a personal manager I've got a PA I've got two PAs actually personal manager I've got a brand manager then I've got a social media manager so everybody knows that this is what they need to be doing so I mm-hmm. okay let's see I think, uh, yes. This network. So it was me doing all these roles and nobody else to help me. So the minute I found structure, it changed my life, I swear. It changed my entire life. So that's how I managed. And, wow. Okay, great, great. And what are some of the highlights of your career since you started? Uh, I've, 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 I've seen some of the very highs and you've done a lot of amazing stuff, but what would you say are some of the highlights of your career? I think I'm still on a journey here. There's so much more that I need to do. So every time I think of it, I'm like, okay, I've done it. But once I've done it, it seems so lukewarm. So I never really look at it like, ah, it was so great. But now it's like, okay, I've done it. What more can I do? What more can I do? Um, But I've been fortunate enough to meet some amazing people. I've been fortunate enough to meet billionaires. I've been fortunate enough to have conversations with media moguls from outside of Zimbabwe. I think one of the most amazing moments for me was in June 2018. Um, I got a call from, it's like a giant. So I have um, a couple of friends because I always like to make friends in different countries. So one of my 
in Ghana. So their boss, she calls me and then she's like, ah, oh, my boss wants to speak to you. I was like, your boss? And then she's like, yeah. And then um, I found out that uh, it's Bola Ray. So if you look at Bola Ray, Bola Ray is like, like the, I don't know how to equate it, but he's like the media mogul or the media um, millionaire of Ghana. Like he owns all the top stations. He's like the guy. He's Nathan, like... Um, Nathan Kwabena. Yes, exactly. That's how, like, he ju- he's just running things in Ghana in terms of media. So he calls me, he's like, hey, I've been watching you online. I've been seeing your page. Um, I've, I've been following you on Twitter. I, I, I saw your Instagram page. I would really love for you to come to Ghana and be a correspondent for a big concert that they do. So they do um, a concert every year called uh, Ghana Meets Niger. So it's a mixture of Nigerian artists and, and Ghana artists. So it's like a competition between the two. So he was like, I'd love to, for you to come through and just see how we do. It's always nice to have people from different regions uh, come through and just learn and also exchange with us. So I was like, bam, a beer, you know? So in my head, I was like, okay, fine. Do I need to? So at the time, I wanted to ask, do I need to like um, book accommodation? What happened? So in that same moment that I'm thinking this, he says to me, so we'll make sure that everything is paid for, your accommodation, your um, your flights. And we just wanted to know from you, who from your team do you want to come with? Um, would you be needing um, a makeup artist to come with you so that we can also make bookings for them? And I'm like, hold up. First of all, we don't have those kind of things in my country, okay? So it was a shock for me. It was a shock. Wow. But they were like, we'll pay for everything. Your manager included, we'll buy you business class tickets. All you have to do is oh. just come. So, mm-hmm. because I was so, you know, we, 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 we're very modest in Zimbabwe because our industry is not at, looked at the same way it is on an international level, right? Whereas in West Africa, entertainment is a very big business for them, right? Okay. So it's, it's so much different. So for them, when they look at me, our numbers may not be as high as theirs in terms of social media, but they understand the value of someone who is on a national uh, radio station or a national television station or is a big artist in their country. Mm-hmm. The value that they place on that is so high. So mm-hmm. here I am, I got there and I'm thinking, ah, no, they'll just be like some small squirrel squirrel there. Yeah. Did we not have a whole Range Rover picking us up, a whole chauffeur, and we had an wow. itinerary ready for us. They did a press run for us, so we were visiting. I was visiting other radio stations, and I was getting interviewed, so I was like, eh, okay. And we had someone who was just there to, to, to go around with us. So for me, that was like a highlight, and in my head, I was like, wow, we're not even there yet in Zimbabwe. We're very far, because these guys are at these levels, and those are like the levels that you expect in Hollywood, but they're taking it so seriously. So at that point... I think that was one of my highs because it really reminded me that there's still so much to do and my voice should be a part of that because if I'm being put in spaces whereby I can experience it, I don't think it's just for me, but it's also for me to impart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, great, great. And I, I can relate because I think I've had uh, a couple of moments that really uh, transformed the way I see things and the way I do things and mm-hmm. some of these moments... Uh, really, you know, brought a, a bigger shift to even how I conduct things and how I end with things. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. You, you've got a huge following on social media. and I don't think it's huge, numbers, but okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's big, <laughs> it's big. It's, it's not, it's quite big. And what, what, what do these numbers mean to you? What does it mean for you? Like getting that kind of traction on social media. Does it translate to anything? Does it mean anything? Yeah, it does translate to a lot. In the Zimbabwean context, our numbers are very low, right? And that always worries me because I look at my counterparts in Nigeria, I look at our counterparts in Ghana, which is a smaller country than Nigeria with a very similar population to ours. But even their following for their basic general uh, radio personalities or media personalities are way higher with an almost similar population. Mm -hmm. So it speaks a lot Mm -hmm. to our own uh, culture or our own view of entertainment in Zimbabwe. But at the same time, I feel that um, everybody must understand that the numbers speak to money, speak to influence. At times, not all the times, you can have a large following but not be influential. Um, mm-hmm. It speaks to the kind of content that you're giving people. What, what is it that they take from you when they come to your page? Are they inspired? Are they laughing? 
Are they entertained? Are they educated? What is it that they come for? So there's a lot of different things that people come to um, uh, my page specifically for, but it speaks to my type of content. The numbers speak to my kind of content, whether it resonates with certain people or not. If it didn't, I don't think it would have grown as much as it did, or it speaks to my brand, that there's something going on within my brand that's making people interested in what I do. So that's, what, that's, the, that's the main thing that um, the numbers speak to, but also monetarily, when companies look at you, what are they saying? They're saying, okay, fine. Maybe you have, as an example, 100,000 followers. On those 100,000 followers, what is your engagement like? Um, if we're to put money into your brand from those 100,000 followers, what is our, uh, what's, what, what, how many eyeballs will we get? How much engagement will we get? So it speaks to all those things and how much money can potentially get into the brand. So that's basically what my numbers specifically speak to because I'm not a musician but my numbers almost compete with musicians. Impressive. And you ask uh, one person who is strongly opinionated on social media, especially on Twitter. And I just want to find out how do you handle negative responses or very ugly comments that come from some of the people that follow you on social media? Do you block them? <laughs> do, you them? do you ever break down and cry because of somebody who has responded to what you've said. And yeah, I'm, I'm quite curious <laughs> because I follow you a lot. And at times I'm like, you see all the comments, right? I see all the comments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's hard. Eh? Sometimes I used to cry a lot about the things that people were saying. And then I realized these people don't know me like that. So the minute I take it personally, then I've lost the plot. No pun intended. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I, 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 I've learned to sift it out. Um, on Twitter specifically, I actually don't read a lot of the responses. But I mute. I've, I've, I've recently learned the power of the mute button. If I see this person is just coming on my page and just talking, sm I mute very fast. I don't even wait. Like, yeah. I just mute because even if they're commenting, I don't see what they're saying. The rest of the people will see, but I won't see. Um, mm -hmm. Then the people were just angry for no reason, and they want to take it out on someone, and I'm, you know, I'm there. So they let it out. So it's almost, I also know that there's sad people in the world, so I must pray for them very hard. But, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's tough, eh? It's tough. Yeah, today, yeah, actually, yeah. let me tell you today. Today I posted a picture of, um, we did a, a photo shoot, and I posted a picture mm -hmm. of me holding a newspaper that was burning, right? And then I said on the yeah, caption, uh, and then I said on the it's caption, on Twitter, have you ever, right? it's on Twitter. <laughs> so okay, I said on okay. the caption, um, if I felt like this whilst reading a newspaper, but I didn't say if I felt like what, right? Mm -hmm. So you know, people in Zimbabwe are just very politicized. Yeah. So yeah. they're just like, yeah, it's this particular, <laughs> this particular newspaper. Even me also. I... <laughs> <laughs> Namibia that I just happened to have on set mm -hmm. and people were like on set they were like we need to have like inter like um artistic artistic interpretation photographs so that's what I'm trying to do more of now so that I can get people's opinions and get people to kind of express themselves and what they see when they see certain types of art mm -hmm. right so people are going wild man like, I'm scared that the newspapers are not going to write about me anymore because of that picture. Because you never know who's watching. And they'll be like, yeah, you are dissing us, the newspapers. Yeah. And the mentions <laughs> of one of the newspapers must have been, like, on, like, some other level today. Because they kept on referring to that yeah. one newspaper, uh, you know. So it wasn't even, like, I was, it wasn't a specific newspaper. It was just me trying to get or gauge what people would say from the picture. And then, you know, some people were like, yeah, gumbiroro. You know, so people start objectifying me even in pictures where I'm fully dressed. Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot. And will I be correct to say that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 
uh, will I be correct to say that you are thick skinned? Because I mean, I've seen some of uh, the comments and every time I see some negative comments, a lot of them like on your post, I don't see you pulling down this post, you know, you, you still maintain your position. Uh, are, are you thick skinned well, or the reason why I you've just developed an art of So I don't take off the posts. I just leave them like that. That's that's. I I don't because of the engagement. I don't delete, mm -hmm. but um, I think I do have a very thick skin now. I've just learned to just be like, you know what? What hurts me though is when my personal friends come at me, saying things that are hurtful. That's when that's when I'm like, wow, guys, you guys know my situation, and you're out there. You know, I I had one particular situation where I had someone who was close to me come to me and say, because you, you remember that I posted some pictures on my birthday mm -hmm. and they said to me, ha, huh, why didn't you post a more decent picture for your birthday? It's your special day. I think you should post something more decent. I was like, excuse me? <laughs> Am I not decent? Just because I'm a bigger girl, mm -hmm. you now have decided that I'm not people are talking about you know so these are these are some of the things that i have to deal with it's 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 bad when it's people that are close to me but when it's people out there i'm i they don't know me like that so i don't i don't expect them to protect me or to to protect my integrity at all points you know so it doesn't really hurt me but it, it really hurts me when it's people that are close but otherwise for everyone else i've got extremely thick skin and you know what i'll even tell you sha i'll even laugh with you if you laugh Another picture of I me with seen the yellow one. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. This guy no, one. I, I don't know. It's one, one of these yeah. one of these um Facebook pages, Isumgido, something like that. It's some blast something. So he's oh, okay. Okay. So I was like, wow, these people don't know that I'm actually very comfortable to move <laughs> around. Without makeup, I can just and I'm, I won't even have any issues. Like this is just me. This is the normal me, uh -huh. and I'm not scared. Uh -huh. I'm a very confident woman in whatever state. Right now, I'm in pajamas. You know, I'm not even like, like right. Oh, I got to figure my pajamas. Sha. Like that's just how I am. I'm a very, I'm a very comfortable person, uh -huh. no matter what space I'm in. So people attack thinking that they're gonna fix you or whatever, but they don't know that. You know, it's neither here nor there. Yeah, if you yeah. fix me and then what? What about that way, man? Can I now marry Shah? See, na nangju. You know what I mean? Yeah. Body shaming uh, and sexism. You're one person who has stood out in terms of representing and just standing for yourself as a uh, fuller figure and not mm -hmm. being ashamed of it. And uh, I remember one picture that you showed about two months back where you showed mm -hmm. some stretch marks on your back. And there was a lot of response and most of the responses were very positive. And I saw mm -hmm. a lot of love that was, uh, you know, shown by different people that follow you. Mm -hmm. How has been your experience with regard to uh, sexism and body shaming and how it affects your personal uh, esteem and, and, and ego? Welcome back. Okay. We're back. We're yes. back. <laughs> Shout out to the networks in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Y'all are messed up. Anyway. <laughs> what were we talking about? We're talking about... We're talking about body shaming, uh, sexism, and how... Yes, yeah, we're talking yes, about yes, yes, your yes, experience. Yes, yes. I, I, I was talking about um, mm -hmm. what the role that you've played in terms of uh, standing up for yourself and also for women that are like fuller figures and uh, the stereotypes that are associated with that. And... Uh, what has been your experience like and what's your opinion with regard to that? I remember a month ago too, you posted an image with stretch marks on your back and uh, mm -hmm. 
there was so much love that people uh, showed towards that image. And it, it was really a picture that went viral. And yeah, so I just want to hear like just your perception, your opinion and why you're doing this. So like I was saying, I have days when I'm, because I've, I've, I've developed the, the security over time, but even on some days I feel so insecure and I feel so ugly and I have to like step out and say, you know what, Samantha, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, you're beautiful. So it's still a, a journey. It's not, it's not that I'm there yet, but mm. I feel like, you know, I have to keep on reminding myself. I, everything around me tells me that I'm not enough. Everything around me tells me I'm not beautiful mm. from the media to the magazines to the television. Like everything is telling me that the woman who looks like me is not it. So one day I woke up and I was like, wait a minute, but that can't be the only person that's beautiful. Like you can't tell me good even if my daughter doesn't grow up to be slim, mm. to be tall, to be yellow bone then she's not good enough. Like, what does that mean? And then I started to, to think and meditate on the beauty and difference, right? Yes. So yeah. this, was, this was one of the things that kind of pushed me to start that narrative because I didn't start it like Kudara. I started it recently mm-hmm. because I've been going through that thing of what does it mean to be beautiful for me, you know? Mm-hmm. And beauty is not an external thing. It's an internal thing. And the minute you get it right internally, it becomes external. That's why you see people who have like a glow up because they may have changed the way they perceive themselves, the way they look at themselves. And Mm -hmm. once you put yourself out there, people start to look at you differently. They're like, ah, I love the way you're now confident. It's very inspiring. I love the way you walk. I love the way you talk. I love the way you articulate certain things. It's a beautiful thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I just thought it's important for us to become examples for our children because I've got two daughters. So I always have to be thinking who is going to set the example for them. And at the time when I started this conversation, there was no one who set the example for them in Zimbabwe. There was no one who was talking about the very real issues that we have as women, the very real insecurities that we have as women that are placed on us by society. It's not like it just comes from nowhere. Society tells you from the time that you are born, from the time that you come out in the world, you're told you're a black woman, so you're a secondary citizen because of everything else that we've gone through from our history it tells us that we are not enough. So we have to now start to emancipate ourselves, start to emancipate our minds and empower ourselves to know that we are worthy and we are enough. When you speak of things like sexism, that is... Mm-hmm a huge issue that we actually have right now in the workplace at home. Um, Mm -hmm. Even patriarchy, it's something that's still embedded in African culture, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Mkazi can't do certain things, or Mkazi can only do that, or can only do this because Varume have to be at the forefront. So there's so many issues that we have to tackle as women before we even start working on ourselves. So it's crazy, you know? It's it's actually quite crazy. And when, when we speak of sexism, that's, that's a large degree prejudice and stereotyping. And that's a conversation that I keep on talking about. It's, it's there in our day-to-day lives. So we have to provoke thought. We have to provoke a different way of thinking within our generation. That's why I'm very comfortable posting a picture of myself showing my legs because I'm trying to provoke you to know that this is 2019. We can't still be talking like our grandfathers and their grandfathers. You know, The world is a very different place now. <laughs> And yeah, yeah. your mind is the problem. If you look at me sexually and all you see is sex, you are the problem, not me. You are. That's why you get people who say, ah, no, because I No, because the person is an idiot and they have issues, not because the person who's dressed up is dressed inappropriately, but because you yourself, you have issues. And there's no one who can push you to rape a person. You by yourself, you will do it because your mind is the one that is sick. So these are the conversations we need to start having so that we, de- like we desensitize people from all of these notions that they have created, all of these standards that they have imposed and conditioned us to believe. So my, my, my issue of self-love and positivity or body positivity uh, or the body positivity movement comes from those very ideals that we have to shake things, we have to break people's minds we have to shake society and moral fiber, as Zimbabweans want to put it. 
I mean, mm-hmm. it's it's crazy. There is a moral. It's we at our our largest, our most craziest state of moral degradation as we speak right now. Because you have people who are doing the craziest things, but they are the same people who come and judge and they'll come and speak on how you're not decent enough, how you are loose, how because you're a woman who decides that I want to be confident, then you are a problem. Have you, know, have you ever noticed that with confident women, people will be like, ah, because very confident, money problem. Why do I have a problem? Because I am assertive, because I know who I am, and I'm not afraid to mm-hmm. express myself, you know? Why is that a problem for you? Mm-hmm. It shows your insecurity, not mine. So these are all the things that we have to battle on a day-to-day basis. And these, fe- these, all these things feed into our souls, to an extent whereby we stop being confident of how we look because we have been conditioned. Mm-hmm. Wow, that was a mouthful, very powerful. And uh... I was about to say that was a mouthful, but and yeah. those are issues that I want to talk about a lot because you're the boa, yes. you know? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I can actually pick that. It's something that is not um, cosmetic, something that is really deep within your... It's It's like... Uh, you're so passionate about this topic, you know, and can I tell you, it's, can, it's can I tell you a quick story? Yeah. 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 Can I sure. tell you a quick story? So today yeah, sure. on radio, there was a, there was a report about how women in South Africa, single women in South Africa are now mm-hmm. um, high, highly ranked. Like they're the, they're the ones who buy the most property in South Africa. So, um, one of our listeners sent through a message and she was like, ah, I'm driving in the car with my, with my uncle. And my uncle says, ah, eh, the reason why there's so many single women more than anyone else buying properties in South Africa is because my slave. So I was like, my slave queen. Like, <laughs> excuse me? Hello? Can a woman not be educated, not be able to put her finances in check and buy herself a house without being called a slave queen? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so it really, so today I'm like on heat, Niyazi, Mad's mind. Still, still Stop on that discriminating one. us. Yeah. <laughs> still on that one. <laughs> Women in music in Zimbabwe, we don't see the ladies. There are only very few, like a handful of women that are making it music mm-hmm. in Zimbabwe. And what's, what's, what's your take on that? How do you... You have worked, you have, you have emceed at different events, like major international concerts, but most of these mm-hmm. dominated by uh, only male, you know, uh, performers. And yeah. w- w- what's, what's, what's your response Take on it, to yeah. the current state of women? Yes. It's unfortunate because, again, um, there's that whole thing here, Kuti women's places in the home and women, they cower sometimes. It's very few women who come forward. And even those that come forward, they are attacked so much that they, can't, that they go back and they, they lose their confidence in themselves. The men are more aggressive. That's the, that's the real truth of it. The men are more aggressive. They take risks. And the women that are there, the ones that are in front, they're doing their best. But they need to have louder voices and not be scared to go for what they want. I mean, you have very few, like you are saying, you have very few Amara Browns, very few Tammy Moyos. Right now, it's like we're struggling. Sometimes we sit down and we're like, okay, fine, guys. We need to find a few more women to add to the lineup. And you're like, eh, which women, you know? Mm-hmm. And I understand the problem of the promoters because there's, there's very few women who are at the forefront. I mean, Cynthia Murray has been out of the game for a while, but she was like pushing. But even at that, we shouldn't be struggling to get names of women who are doing well in music. I mean, for the men, you can literally just keep on saying, Ningi, 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 Enzo, XQ, Jabreza, mm-hmm. eh, Winky D. You can keep on going. But for the women, it's like, Amara Brown, Tammy Moyo, Ombo Mira, uh, Soma, but she hasn't released anything, so I can't really put it there. Come back. Uh, and then you get stuck. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Which is unfortunate, but we need to be a little bit more aggressive. And we need to get out of our comfort zone of, hey, the society... Hey, what will people say about me if I'm at the forefront, if I'm doing my thing, mm-hmm. you know? Let me tell you mm-hmm. something about her. You may be shocked by her, but she's out there, you know? And there are very few women, few women who are confident enough to do what she's doing. So it's like, it's a tough space for women because you're always scared to 
someone will judge you. And I think that's another reason why a lot more women are not coming forward to just push, 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 you know? Um, I mean, there's Anashasha, Anashasha, but yeah. I don't know why I'm not feeling their power. I don't know if it's, if it's the fault of the radio stations or if it's the fault. I, I don't know. I really don't know. But, but, but don't do, know. do you feel, uh, because you've talked a lot about the sexism in the industry and just the general mindset of um, an average Zimbabwean with regard to issues of gender and how they view women and that the first thought is sex, right? Do you think these are some of the things that are really pushing women out of showbiz mm-hmm. where it's, yeah. one, a very competitive scene, but I, because I when I'm thinking of... Uh-huh. Uh, okay, I was saying. When I, I actually when I... think that you are right. That there's a there's a very large degree of sexism, and also sometimes um, there's certain spaces that are not safe for female musicians. But in the same breath, that's not talking about concerts, etc. But in terms of the music that's being brought out, because that's what I can speak on with authority. There's not mm-hmm. a lot of hits that are hitting mass that are coming from the females. So. I don't know where, where the problem lies, but it's definitely not about, it's not just sexism. There is more to it. What's that song you're, you're playing? In one of my songs, I'm going to be a good By Bazooka. <laughs> oh, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. Sorry, the tell you that. I'm going to be a good friend. I'm going to be a good <laughs> I know, and, and, and like I stand by my words and I'm not saying what I say is law or yeah, it's prescriptive yeah. but I, this is just my personal opinion and I'm open to correction I'm open to learning yeah. I don't think that the, the minute that you say you know everything that's just a bad space to be in I don't know everything but I do have some form of insight on the things that do happen and that's my personal opinion it's not yeah. like the law okay yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So my last two questions: one, it's on the young people, on youth, and then secondly, mm-hmm. uh, I think you saw my post this week where I talked about how you inspired me over a period of six years, where I've widely consistently wow. talked about uh, how you want to become a media mogul, and it started to kick me in, and because I my background is media, but the last serious projects that I did on media were like in 2011. So all the years mm-hmm. I've just been working on dance and dance and stuff. And after that, I said, I need to do something. And mm-hmm. I could say, you're one of the people that inspired me to start thinking about ear ground and developing it in the direction that is taking now with online radio and a blog and these conversations. So mm-hmm. I just want to say thank you so much. No, thank you. I... I seldom hear people talking about how I've even touched or even um, just maybe inspired anything in their lives. So it's, it's so important that I hear that. And congratulations. I think you're just Thanks beginning. You're one of the very powerful voices. I'll always tell you this um, you so because I believe in what you do. You're such a powerful voice and you are going to be a big part of this telling of the Zimbabwean story, not just the African story, but I feel like we don't tell the Zimbabwean story enough. So you're so important to, to, to what needs to happen to Zimbabwe. Um, Thank you so much. It really means yeah. a lot coming from you, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to ask you, uh, young people in Zimbabwe, what would you say to them right now? <sighs> Don't stop dreaming. They've stolen your... They've stolen your hope. They may have mm-hmm. stolen your belief in what could potentially be mm-hmm. but don't don't let them don't don't let them you are more powerful your dreams are more powerful and your dreams are valid mm-hmm. than their inabilities or their failures and when i say mm-hmm. they um they for every person is different mm-hmm. they could be your parents they could be um, authorities, they could be just naysayers in your life that keep on telling you you can't. And yet there is a, 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 a more dominant voice that will tell you that you can. I always talk about myself because I know that I'm uneducated. I'm not as educated as a lot of people, but because the voice or the, 
the power that is above me that I pray to and I seek counsel from is more powerful mm -hmm. than anything on this earth. That's what I believe. I don't believe that anyone who tells me that I can't is more powerful than that person. So that's why I keep on saying you must dream big and don't stop dreaming. So don't allow them to take your dreams away. Keep on fighting. It's hard. And you may feel like, ah, you know, it's my bitch. I have to die. That's what I hear my youth is saying. <laughs> but yeah. don't let the people who are negative speak into your life because the minute you allow that that's the end of your of your dreaming that's the end of everything so mm -hmm. keep on telling them even when they tell you that try the worst that could happen is that you could fail but even when you fail there is a lesson in your failure that will allow you to get up again and correct and then move forward so the worst thing you can do is try, but do not stop dreaming, ever. Oh, powerful. Amen. Depends <laughs> it because a lot of people don't know. I don't know what out here. Do you know what I'm guys? Mira, 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 Mira. I always tell people I've got a calling. Yes. I've got a calling. I've got a calling. And uh -huh. everybody's got a calling, but it depends on what kind of calling. I'm wanting calling you with Zim Dan, so in Indine, calling you. Yeah, no pinda. So I wanna I wanna I wanna speak into someone's existence right now. Okay, so there's someone who may be listening right now and they are completely broken and they are thinking that there's nothing out there in the world for them. But let me tell you something. The most powerful thing that we have in our lives is the first thing, if you go to your Bible, <laughs> do you have your Bible close by? Amen. Do you have a Bible app? Do you have a yes. Bible app? Do you have a Bible app? All right. So I'm going yeah. to take it to the gospel. The most powerful thing mm -hmm. that we have that God gave us through the word. Okay. I hope mm -hmm. you have your Bible. For those of you who are watching at, at home, I can see you guys. For mm -hmm. those of you who are watching. All right. Mm -hmm. There's one particular verse. And I always refer to this because mm -hmm. um, for me, I believe that God speaks to us in very subtle ways at times, but in very important ways. Okay. Mm -hmm. So... If you go to Genesis, right, the beginning. Yeah. Um, where am I? And by the way, I don't have my Bible. Okay, now I have my Bible. So if you go okay. to, to your Bible, Genesis, um, when God created the earth and everything yeah. around him, right, when God created everything, he spoke, right? Mm -hmm. But if you go to your Bible, I want, I want us to really, like, go to the particular thing. So... Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That is Genesis 1 verse 1. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of, of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Right. Now, talking about juice. Verse 3, it says, God said, let there be light. Mm -hmm. And there was light. God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. But let's go back to the beginning. Verse 3, it says, God said. So the most powerful thing that you can do is you can speak into mm -hmm. your existence because the first, yes. the way that God created this earth was by speaking. He didn't compile Madaga. No. It says, mm -hmm. God said. Let mm -hmm. there be light. So mm -hmm. we have the ability to speak into our existence mm -hmm. good things, right? So remember that. Don't speak ill in your life. Don't say, that. Because your mouth, your tongue, there's power in the tongue. There's, ver mm -hmm. there's verses all over the Bible that will tell you the same thing. But the most powerful thing that you have is your words. So be careful. Mm -hmm what you release into the universe because you are creating your future by the things that you say. So, for everybody out there listening, Bishop Red, okay? Bishop Red, Bishop Red, Red in the house. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> Remember that whatever you speak, it shall become. So, yeah. speak into your life only good things but 
there is rice in my cupboard which is what i'm not gonna tune <laughs> there is milk in my refrigerator yes. there is a benz waiting out the same way uh-huh. i say i am a media mogum what you speak is the most important thing so if you keep on speaking that into your existence it's not on get mutambo but in five years time name out ah comes can i in it's been it's been it's been awesome it's been awesome if you ever, ever before i go if you ever tried tv i know you you present tv but if you ever tried yeah. like acting because i think you don't even need a script you can just flow <laughs> You know what? I I don't know if I could, I could act as such, but yeah. I think I want to I want to try things. I don't I always say that I, I, when I leave this earth I want to leave empty. I don't want to leave having not done everything that I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to try everything, but more importantly, I'm going to I'm going to launch officially launch my media company just like you. I'm 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 taking my stuff seriously. Awesome. I want to start um I've already started producing content that I'm going to be distributing so my media company that's basically what it is i'm going to be doing a lot of content creation but it's a very exciting year for me from a business point of view for the media space because i'm now getting into uh, more of the business side of media so it's exciting times ahead um still a, a new baby but yeah, yeah. i'm going to uh, officially announce it properly do the whole launch and everything and i hope that people love what we do uh because i think that we're going to be making kick ass african content it's 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 our time as africans to start um to telling our narrative. truths telling our narrative our way because you can't tell me to not go german way a german can tell me about my african history in diribo mm-hmm. guys we've got so many yeah. beautiful stories you know about yes. queen lot lot there's so many um i cannot begin to talk like to speak about every single thing monomutapa queen lotlo there's um the story of 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 not nyangani there's so many things that have not begun to even be told but we need yeah, to tell our so stories true. it's not going to be that series i got and and game of thrones and i'm going to do we've got so many stories that we should be telling as africans and i think it's our time to shine That's awesome. That's awesome. And I I think that's also my kind of drift right now just realizing that like, we need to tell our own narratives and mm-hmm. until we do that uh our story is going to always be twisted and we need yes. to, to to utilize the so- social space the media space that we have like mm-hmm. now you know we we now we have been super empowered because mm-hmm. through internet anybody can actually be able to tell a narrative and document something. So mm-hmm. yeah, well done on your initiative and your endeavor and I know definitely it's going to be success and I must commend you in terms of the energy. I I, I thought your energy is only for radio it's like stuff that you you, no. you prepare and you're like I'm going to radio <laughs> I have to. It, it, That's it, just how need, I am. And I think we need we need a lot of that. It's very contagious mm-hmm. and I really appreciate you taking time to be part of this conversation i don't know if you have something to say that you itching to say before we close it up mana ka plot aga ipa plot aga ipa na zvitongoti ndingotaura ha no plot sando dzake dzese sando zvipiri everything take it it's yours dzvago dzvago but thank you so much for having me i think um it's always fun when other people appreciate you because this is just to get a interview aga so when it's other way around it's like i don't know Uh, but thank you for acknowledging what we do and i pray that um ear ground goes to every corner of this earth and you are increased in everything that you do and also that uh you continue doing what you do for the industry and for the culture thank you thank you so much for believing in the foundation like you know i'm i'm, I'm naturally a shy person and i i'm not really like meant for for tv or for but i've had to challenge my limitations do it so, it's important do it yeah It's important to leave this earth empty. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. Thanks a lot Miss Red. Which song do you want to sign out with? Uh Bra 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 bra. Yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you about Zimbabwean music right now. Zimbabwean yes. music is epic. So, mm-hmm. tell me more you launched um a new song Kwandino uh Kwa 
Quartino or something like that. That's a really cool song. Mm-hmm. But I'm just talking about them because I want people to know that there's a new song by Tammy. Uh-huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. I always talk about the women. I want, I want the women to be, you know, pushed. Mm-hmm. I love Zimbabwean music so much. I love, I love XQ. I love Takura. I love Ja Praise. I'm going to put it out there. People, not like love, like, you know, because I also thought of Sidi. I thought so when you saw the pictures then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, I love uh, Nati O. I love this, this this new movement that I'm just loving. This dance movement. I love Enzo Aisha. I love him. I love Jazz Signal. I lo- I love Zimbabwean music, guys. So, because I love Zimbabwean music so much, any song that you can play for me is Zimbabwean, mm-hmm. it's okay. Okay. Surprise cool. me. So, Surprise me. Let's see. Let's, let's see, let's see. see. This one. Ah! My Thank girl. You, Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> hey. New voices amplified. Here,